And what is up guys, Technicals here for lack of anything else to really talk about right now. I'm going to be going through just what I've been doing over the past week in terms of my mining sort of MO. I found this nostalgic sort of zen garden, if you will, of a mining method and it appeals to me on many levels. So I'm going to get into that. Let me know what you're doing in the comments below. I'm the Technicals. Let's get into it. For that, this video brought to you by me, the Technicals at technicalsmakes.etsy.com. 3D printed products for crypto mining, amongst other things. Introducing the new ASIC adapter for AC Infinity S8 fans. Similar in functionality to the Fruition's design model, but much cheaper. Use code YouTube for 10% off your order. Link in the description below. And once again, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel for more quality content like this. So it, when you started mining, I don't know when you started mining, but I started mining in like Mm, early 2017-ish, and back then, as most miners do, I started with a really easy program, Nice Hash. Every time I use it, especially like the Windows desktop miner, I get this warm sort of nostalgic sense, like, you know, it was exciting back then, before cryptocurrency just sucks all the joy out of you. Uh, it was fun. It was new and exciting, and it's like, oh my god, I'm making money with my computer. And so I've been on that a bit recently. I've been on Aleo, which is what we're looking at here now, over on F2 Pool. Did a couple videos on Aleo. Aleo, for whatever you think about it, the price is doing things. So since it's released back on the 18th, 19th of September, uh, about a week ago, uh, price is going up pretty good, 20% up. Uh, it did dip down there after the launch, and um, I put out a video there. It was kind of not rage bait, but controversy bait, which is... Uh, it's me, you know, I'm a middle-aged edge lord at heart, so, um, you know, kind of wanted to put something like that out, because I do feel that with all of its backing uh, by big players, it just, I mean, if there is going to be a bull run, it's its going to do something. Uh, there's just too many people, too many important people with their finger in the pie, and the thing I noticed especially is that despite having a market cap in the, the 20, in ranks number 2,600 in terms of market cap, but over the, this past day, day and a half, and its total volume ranks as uh, top 200. So a lot of volume on a coin that has a very uh, low market cap. Now, sure, you can make the argument that, you know, not a lot of the circulating supply is out or they've done shady things in the past. I, I, I don't care about any of that because, again, when the bull runs happen, all the rules seem to just go out the window. Dumb money flows in, hopefully, and, you know, the number go up. And that's what I'm banking on here, and that's why... I don't really care what Aleo does. I don't really care what any coin does. Uh, it's more of a mass psychology question for me. And so I've been mining on Aleo over here on F2 pool. I didn't pull all my GPUs out of my salad rigs, put them back into a GPU, GPU rig, and then point the entirety of that GPU rig over to F2 pool. No, I didn't do that because I'm on my new method, my Zen method. My Zen method is the lazy man's method. Windows machines. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it feels so good to do this too. So I've got all my salad rigs, which I've been managing with Chrome Remote Desktop, just to be able to log in, restart salad, or turn it back on, or do updates, or whatever. And so some of the rigs, you know, were experiencing problems, and after the new tier structure went into place, some of the rigs, well, one of the rigs, namely my 2080 Ti, is just unlikely to ever get a job again. So I went ahead and threw nice hash miner on there and just kind of let it run because I was like, well, what else am I going to do with this thing? And so when Aleo popped off, I was like, okay, well, let's just throw it on Aleo. And then I started doing that. And then I put it back and forth with nice hash. I was like, all right, I got my bag of Aleo. The hash rate's going up. I'm just going to go back on nice hash with this thing because I'm not getting that great of a hash rate. No sooner does that happen than Varus decides to put a rocket ship butt plug up its ass and start going through the roof. And so I had mined a, the, uh, an infinitesimally small, is that a word, uh, amount of Varus many, many months ago, but so I don't have any significant bag, but the profitability is there. It might continue to go up. I don't know, not really doing anything else. So I threw some rigs on Varus. I'm mining Varus over on Vipor.net. Check them out, link in the description below. The guy that runs that pool, very, very nice guy. Very, very nice pool. You can see here, I had a bit of a dip because uh, there is yet another hurricane uh, or something uh, kind of, you know, making its way, making its way downtown. So because all my miners run on Starlink, uh, you know, my latency goes up and then, you know, I kind of start dropping things, but it seems to be okay for now. But the hurricane, the big part of the hurricane's headed here within the next couple of days. So I expect to experience some issues there. Luckily for me, I do have the redundancy of my landline, my hardline cable, 
um, that I can just kind of plug in if things get, you know, super bad. Because Varus is only mineable or really only uh, worthwhile on mining on your CPU, I decided to run nice hash miner and turn off my CPU there. And I'm running Varus on, uh, I think this is the 7950 or this is the 7900. So I'm running it on, I think, 18 cores. Uh, and then I'm just running nice hash the GPU by itself and it's been going for several hours um, You know no notable issues. Will it sustain? I don't know. Uh, I've not seen anybody else running uh, Varus mining while also doing some, you know, basic flavor nice hash mining on their on their GPU in this sort of lazy fashion before uh, But it's not like I really look around that hard anyway doing the same thing on a 7950 x3d 64 gig 4070 a nice rig But this is my problem child rig its name is actually problem child because it just when it was running out It was just continuously going down. I'm not sure the reason I think I suspect it's something that screwy with the motherboard because I just reset the BIOS completely There's no overclocks underbolts or anything like that on here uh, everything is all updated updated drivers or whatever but since doing this dual dual mine method uh, it's running great over here on my 8700 G is a salad rig it's still on you can't see it dumbass here turn all this off so I'm over here on my 8700 G I got a four dollar container on salad and so I was like well salad only really uses obviously the 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 GPU as you can see here CPU is at about 15 percent this is an 8700 G so this is what mm, 16 threads uh, so like maybe I can mine on 10 of the threads with Varus uh, but with a $4 container, I don't think I want to roll the dice on that. I don't want to lose a $4 container. So I'm leaving that one alone. Uh, but maybe when it goes back to calculating, because my uh, this 8700G, this APU system, uh, seems to pick up containers more... Uh, more often than any of the other rigs, maybe once I come off of this container... I'll throw on Varus and start mining it because I've, I've tried CPU mining with salad running in the background before with Cubic and Zephyr. Didn't work. Uh, never picked up a container. So I don't know what's going on there, but um, maybe there's some luck with Varus, maybe Raptorium or something like that. Um, I kind of like the idea of doing the double dip. I call that a technicals dip. It's not a technicals dip. Plenty of people do mine, not me. I'm, I've never really been into it. It's too much work. Finally, over here on my Xeon of all systems, you can't see it again. You got to move your little camera here, guy. Again, another $4 container on my Xeon 4070, 64 gigs. Uh, very tempted to try running uh, Varus on this, uh, but not while a $4 container is in play. There's so many people are on it that if we didn't just continue covering to pay for it, um, about 20,000 workers in North Carolina would have been forced to double their health insurance premiums for teachers, firefighters, police officers. So we are paying for it or we aren't? We, we were, but they stopped because Excellent. it was like so expensive. However, they are building a $4 billion uh, production facility in Clayton. For what? North Carolina for Wagovi, those drugs. God damn. So I think that... Right. That's funny you say but I that. I guess it was just in the news. My thumbnail that I was containers. making for this video, I put a, uh, <laughs> it's me in a motorized scooter with a big thing of Ozempic. Yeah, I like that. Hopefully Ozempic calls uh, everybody that takes it. So he's lobbying for free Ozempic? Or, yeah, or How about that, free no, cancer drugs? It should, and they should use it to pay for cancer drugs. And then the fat people love you and this is kind of becoming a, a sort of theme and I, i'm not doing this on purpose to try to craft a uh, a, no, a more normy lazy experience with the content that i'm putting out there but i'm a busy dude i do other stuff i don't eat sleep and breathe crypto uh because that seems like a terrible life this is meant to be passive income uh side quest sort of thing and i want to keep it that way i don't want to dig deep into these things like i saw that nice hash put out uh, that is integrating with Docker. So if you're running a Docker system on an H, you know, these high performance compute uh, sort of environments in a, in a farm or you're running vast AI, you can somehow integrate NiceHash into that. So when you're off container, NiceHash will pick it up and, and do it that way. This is not like a Windows based thing. It's not a, like a normie kind of thing. So I didn't pursue it any further and I'm not seeing anybody else really talk about it either uh, because it's sort of on that advanced level. And sure, profits may crop up uh, in those sort of advanced methods uh, there, but most people are not going to do that shit. It's just way too complex to set up. Uh, if it gets to the point where the, the profitability is kind of insane uh, on those systems and require those complex setups, 
I can rest assured that someone's going to make it easy and take a slice of it and serve it up to normies in a, uh, a way that's sort of easy to do one click setup type deal. I'm digging this method. It's nostalgic. It's fun. It's super duper easy. I just log in and then whatever the most profitable thing is, or at least I think has legs moving forward. I just kind of jump on it on these Windows machines. It's fantastic. And honestly, the way it's looking to me personally, personal opinion is you're going to have to remain more dynamic in, in in this way now that there's no big coin to mine. There's no Ethereum to run to. Uh, so having all your GPUs in a GPU rig and staying specific to GPU coins only, it seems a little you're kind of locked in. So like, you know, when salad popped off or say salad puts out a whole bunch of containers, it needs a whole bunch of work to be done. Um, you're not going to really be able to do that if everything's purposed into a GPU rig. So stay, having everything in these sort of yeah, Windows machines gives you uh, immense flexibility. And I know there are more there are, there are more better ways to set up these Windows machines to where you can remote into them or maybe run them, you know, with commands and stuff like that. Doing all that, what's the real benefit? How much time are you saving uh, versus doing that? I understand if you've got like a hundred Windows machines, maybe there's some bespoke solution uh, to. Uh, kind of run and manage all of those but again i don't feel that most people are doing that kind of thing and i think probably most people with a lot a lot a lot of gpus probably don't have a lot of modern gpus because ethereum merge happened the current generation cards uh, kind of came out after that merge and so i don't really see uh, that a lot of people went all into 40 series cards to outfit their GPU farms because it was like kind of writing was on the wall that GPU profitability was maybe uh, at best uncertain. So that's what I'm doing. Love to know what you're doing in the comments below. Be sure to like this video because it's a nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this. I'm the Technicals. See you next time.